The bleak landscape of high inflation and skyrocketing house prices is pushing large numbers of young Irish people toward the idea of emigration. In the midst of this economic storm, according to a survey carried out by the National Youth Council of Ireland, 7 out of 10 citizens between 18 and 24 years old are seriously considering leaving the island in search of a better quality of life abroad. Today on Extraordinary Walks, we thoroughly analyze this problem, which weighs so heavily on the lives of Irish people. In the past, Ireland proudly boasted one of the highest home ownership rates in the world, reaching almost an impressive 80%. However, the glow of that golden era has faded over time. Today, the country faces a housing crisis that is deeply affecting. The number of homeowners has decreased, while evictions and the increasing number of homeless people spread like a grim omen. The migratory flow in the past was marked by famine, lack of employment and economic crises, such as those of the 1970s or the devastating fall of 2008. However, today, Ireland appears much more prosperous. The nation enjoys a huge tax gain from technology companies, which are now the fundamental pillar of its economy. In addition, the country registers a low unemployment rate of 4.3% as of March 2024. In fact, youth unemployment is the lowest in the entire European Union. This economic transformation has changed the migration landscape, where the search for opportunities has become more selective and the motivations for emigrating have diversified. Amid this bleak outlook, demand for rental housing has reached desperate levels, creating a web of scarcity and exorbitant prices that eclipses even the brightest light. At the epicenter of this storm is Dublin, now one of the 10 most expensive cities in the world to rent. Renting a modest apartment in the Irish capital could cost you a hefty sum of €2,000 a month, and this price escalation shows no signs of stopping. In April 2024, prices increased by 5.4% from February of the same year. In this city, renting has become a risky game, where the price is a roof over your head and the cost is your own peace of mind. Faced with the impossibility of renting an entire apartment, even with a decent salary, thousands of people choose to rent a room or share a double bed. Those who have tried to find a room have probably mainly turned to the daft IR portal, although high demand means owners receive a flood of emails, resulting in a low response rate. Currently, the portal shows only 1,835 homes available for rent across the island, along with a total of 2,371 rooms. However, getting a response from the owner only marks the beginning of an odyssey. Upon arriving at the place, you are faced with the disconcerting image of more than 20 individuals lined up like dominoes, waiting for their turn to inspect the room in a short period of three minutes. After bypassing this first filter, an interview with the owner awaits you, where the absurd rules border on the surreal. Lease agreements can lock you in for a minimum of six months, and Irish law gives landlords the power to evict tenants if they want to sell the property, renovate it, or even offer accommodation to a family member in the space. In this land of diminished opportunity, the roof over your head can disappear as quickly as it appeared, leaving you at the mercy of relentless market forces. It should be noted that in addition, the annual variation rate of the Consumer Price Index CPI, in Ireland in March 2024 was 2.9%. But where does the problem come from? These days, when corporation tax attracts corporations, Dublin has become home to more than a thousand multinational giants, while the price per square meter rises relentlessly. But this scenario was not always the norm. After gaining independence in the 1920s, the government embarked on a construction campaign and sold many publicly owned homes to tenants. However, during the Celtic Tiger era, the economy was boosted by real estate investment, speculation and cheap, risky loans. The acquisition of second homes became common. After the real estate bubble burst, prices fell, but soon recovered their rise. Since then, the percentage of homeowners has decreased, approaching the European average. The acquisition of homes by large for-profit multinationals raises a number of significant concerns for Irish citizens. 
Firstly, this practice contributes to increasing the shortage of housing available on the market, which in turn drives up both sales and rental prices. This makes it increasingly difficult for Irish families to access suitable housing, especially for those on lower incomes or those who are economically vulnerable. In addition, the massive purchase of homes by large corporations generates tensions in the local community. The presence of institutional investors can displace local residents, increase gentrification, and disrupt the social fabric of neighborhoods. This negatively affects social cohesion and the sense of belonging. Another worrying aspect is that large multinationals tend to prioritize their financial interests over the needs and concerns of the local population. This is reflected in restrictive rental policies, abrupt rent increases or lack of proper maintenance of properties, which affects the quality of life of tenants and their residential stability. For the parliamentarian, the real concern lies in the sharp decline in the percentage of young people between 20 and 30 years old who own homes, which raises concerns for the future, especially in terms of financial security in a country where the pension system is deficient. Thus, two main factors are identified as responsible for the housing problem in Ireland, the shortage of public housing and the urgent need to regulate the private rental sector. In relation to rentals, the urgent need to have a more stable and affordable private sector is insisted on. Stability and cost are the key points that must be addressed to provide effective solutions to this housing crisis. The pressing need to regulate the private rental sector is another critical aspect of the housing crisis in Ireland. The disproportionate increase in rental prices, especially in urban areas, has created an unsustainable situation for many tenants. The lack of proper regulation has allowed landlords to raise rental prices unchecked, making it difficult for people to find stable, affordable housing. The opposition party in Ireland, Sinn Féin, has made a bold statement by promising to reduce house prices in the country as much as possible. This promise comes at a time when property prices have become one of the biggest concerns for Irish people, with the average sale reaching €415,000 in Dublin, according to the Statistics Office. Mary Lou MacDonald, leader of the party, has stressed that the average price of houses should be €300,000 or less. This disparity is largely attributed to a shortage of supply, which drives both sales and rental prices upward. Therefore, increasing supply seems to be the key to reducing these prices, as pointed out by Marion Finnegan, director of residential at real estate agency Sherry Fitzgerald. However, the need for deep structural changes to improve housing affordability raises a heated debate around Sinn Féin's promise. The suggestion of a price drop evokes fears of a global crisis that has hit the Irish economy hard in the past, raising uncertainty over the long-term impact of these measures. To address this issue comprehensively, it is imperative to implement measures that address both the public housing shortage and the need to regulate the private rental sector. This could include a significant increase in the construction of social and affordable housing, as well as the introduction of policies that limit unjustified increases in rental prices and provide greater security for tenants. In addition, strategic investments in infrastructure and public services are needed to ensure sustainable and equitable urban development. Ultimately, solving Ireland's housing problem will require a coordinated and collaborative approach between government, the private sector and civil society. Only through joint commitment and effective measures can we achieve a housing system that is stable, affordable and accessible to all Irish citizens.